All right, everyone. We are here at New York AI Summit, and I'm with Bonnie from Vespa. Bonnie, welcome to the Ravit Show. Hello, thank you. It's such a pleasure to finally meet you in person. We've been talking off air, and uh, you know, obviously over Zoom calls. But good to finally meet you in person. I see uh, the summit being so yes. uh, busy as well. It's so busy. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen obviously so many people around the Vespa booth as well. So. Uh, couldn't wait to chat with you. So here we are, and um, I'm kind of uh, obviously curious to learn a lot about Vespa. What are the things that you all are doing? The cool things I spoke to Thomas as well, and uh, uh, amazing things that he mentioned around Rag. But uh, just for our audience, before we start, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you do at Vespa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm Bonnie. I'm product marketing at nice. Vespa. So really responsible for bringing our product to market go to a lot of trade shows mm -hmm. and you know like to network with people and, and spread the message so that's yeah. awesome and I also know you all work uh, very closely with a lot of financial companies we do so yes. I'm, I'm I'm kind of curious to also learn a little about uh, you know what will be the most transformative AI development in financial services what do you think about it and how will it uh, reshape the industry because uh, it's more like the regulated industry, right? It is, um, yes. So I'm kind of curious to learn a little about that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And you know, one of the things that, that comes to mind, which might sound like an easy answer at first, but I'll dig into it a little bit more, is this whole generative AI thing that's happened. It's gotten right. a lot of excitement. Now, obviously with financial services, being a regulated industry, it's a little tricky on you know how can we leverage Gen AI within our uh, customer experience. Yep. But I think the transformative part about this isn't necessarily you know, using this for chat bots and question answering and things like that, which is great and which does a lot of- A good job, a right. Good, it does a good job, it really right. does help with the customer experience. But the fact that we're able to vectorize data, right? So this is turning these, uh, these data points into numerical representations yep. that really help us understand the similarity between items that's really what's going to be transformative um, because you go beyond the retrieval, you go beyond just getting answers yep. and really understanding you know, who our customers are, you know, different types of information, going beyond transactional data and that's really what's going to be transformative and you'll see that in a lot of different use cases. It is very important, you're, you're right about that because I feel where we are in the world of um, you know, we, we're doing various things uh, which are more like the top of the funnel for me when we kind of looking at, but getting into regulated industries, it becomes like uh, more and more to get into the depth of, uh, you know, different and complex use cases. Talking about use cases, I'm kind of also curious to know because you work with, closely with a lot of customers, yeah. you, you obviously talk to a lot of clients in the community as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you seen, like what are those types of practical use cases that you can share with our audience uh, can get a little interesting. Yeah, right? yeah, so you know, I mentioned the vectorized data, yeah. right? And so if you're able to really understand the transactions that are happening, these vectors can really help you see any outliers, right? So this mm -hmm. means fraud detection. We can yep. see if there's anything that's, anything weird that's happening, and that's something that uh, Vespa has been used for as right. well. Um, you know, I've, I've been seeing things like, um, you know, automatic portfolio management. So based on the information that you have about a person and the different offers that you yep. have, what can be most tailored to them and make the most sense for that person. I think a really interesting use case that I've been seeing a lot is this, you know, being able to, to do the trading based on what's happening in the market and automatically doing that, right? And that's something that we're seeing from financial institutions as well wow. as people on their own are building their own bots to start managing their trades, right? Yeah. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome, yeah. It's it's risky but cool and you know, obviously there's, I also kind of feel that uh, you're right because I, I have like a few enterprise leaders that I talk to and are from finance and they're like, uh, it's like almost maybe 50 to 60 percent of their work is now automated yeah and maybe that's where they've kind of you know have bots in place doing the job that they they were doing earlier yeah yeah if you're capturing data right and you have a way to monitor that data and identify that outliers it takes away a lot of that manual effort very true so I think that's kind of where it's going and then you can spend that energy elsewhere that's awesome I'm kind of also curious to learn a little about you know uh, 
what's your take on uh, you know the overlooked application of AI that could deliver real value? What do you think about that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think when we think about AI, we try to think of the most exciting, highly technical, futuristic things. True. Sure. And that tends to have us overlook some things that may seem basic. Right. So for me, one of the things that we're looking at at Vespa right now is really how can we take advantage of not just textual information, but visual information as well. So we know that in financial services, you know, they're going to have charts, graphs, you know, all kinds of different ways of displaying information. Traditionally, you know, as we're using Gen AI today, it's, it's basically text-based. Yes. So a lot of those visual charts and graphs aren't being used in these chatbots and generative answering solutions. Yep. So what we're looking at now is um, using tensors, which are multi-dimensional representations. So yep. it's taking vectors, which are one-dimensional, sensors are multi-dimensional, so that you can really capture the image as well. Because when you're able to leverage the image and the text together, mm -hmm. you get more accurate answers in your, nice. in your generative res generated responses. You get more accurate retrieval. Um, you get more context about the information. And you're really able to tap into the wealth of data and the wealth of knowledge that you have in your enterprise that yep. traditional text-based retrieval didn't allow before. So I think that's something that people need to pay attention to is this, yep. you know, move over LLM, it's now time for VLMs. Wow. That's vision language models. Vision language yes, models. Yes. That's right, that's awesome. I, uh, I'm kind of curious to learn more about it for sure in, uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure our audience would also love to learn. So if they want to do that, uh, where can they, uh, do you all have blogs around it? Yes, uh, Where yes. can they uh, learn more about that? Yes, uh, so we have a research team that's consistently staying up to date on the latest and greatest of this. We have our blog, um, nice. so blog.vespa.ai. Mm -hmm. We're always updating our LinkedIn, which is Vespa cool. AI. So, you know, follow us on LinkedIn. We're always posting updates. That's fantastic. I'm going to share those links with them as well. Yeah. Uh, so they can learn and so can I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. Bonnie, one last question for you. If folks want to reach out to you, learn more about you know the different things that you're mm -hmm. doing in this space, where can they do that? Where can they follow you? Yeah, yeah. So I'm on LinkedIn as well, Bonnie Chase. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, Bonnie, we'll keep the conversation going. I know it's just day one and uh, you're already so busy uh, mm -hmm. around. So all the best for the rest of the, your conference, but uh, definitely looking forward to chatting more. Thanks so much. Thank it's you very great. much. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.